Hello, I'm Dirk Ducharme, Quality Digest Editor-in-Chief. Last month, Quality Digest CEO Jeff Dewar and I attended ASQ's World Conference on Quality and Improvement in Anaheim, California. We conducted several interviews with their two CEOs and both boards of directors. We think you're going to find these interviews pretty enlightening. We'd like to thank ASQ for making everyone available for our questions, and we hope these interviews will provide insight and support to our readers as they navigate the future, especially as it applies to their own careers. All right, Danny, Steve, Jim, welcome. Thank you, Thank you for Danny. making this time. So let me uh, start off with uh, the basics, and Jim, let me ask you this. What is ASQE, and uh, what is its purpose? So ASQE is a 501c6, so it's a trade association, and we support organizational memberships. Uh, we support the trade, the field of quality, and we're, our goal is to elevate the field. And so part of our commitment to the the world in support of a 501c6 is to publish an annual report on the state of the industry. So that's our insights and excellence. So, it, so when you say organization, uh, you, to represent organizations, you, you mean like corporations, companies? Exactly. So, so whereas ASQ, when, and we'll be talking to them later, but whereas ASQ is more the individual, ASQE is the company the individual works Correct. for. And so then you'll get organization-wide benefits of your organ of your membership. Okay, and this this includes government organizations as well, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And okay. globally. Okay. So we have uh, members all over the world. All right. Um, so I want to read uh, ASQE's vision. Um, this is uh, from your vision statement. Uh, Drive best practices and thought leadership to improve organizational success. So what does that actually mean to me as a company? So I'm, I'm Dirk Charm, CEO of Acme Fish Company. What is ASQE actually giving me? I mean, with that vision statement in mind, what does that actually translate to? So the insights on excellence is the key deliverable there. Uh, our org members, the primary value of the new org membership model is they can take a benchmarking survey. So all of our org members have access to this benchmarking survey. It's got eight different criteria that lets them compare how they're doing against other industries, other regions of the world, other like organizations. You can even drill down by job titles, for example. That is how we identify gaps in areas of leadership, strategy, technology, the barriers and disruptors. All of a sudden they have a report that puts it into a reference point for them and any other organization. Even someone like Tata really values that because they're so internally focused, they don't have the opportunity to see a lot of benchmarking data. So we can't consult and give them answers. We're not in the business of providing solutions, but we are in the business of giving them a current state of how their organization looks. So and they deploy that survey then internally to employees. So it's, it's data, but it's also information. Yes. It's data that has some yes. meaning to it. And then they can take that data and they can use it internally to elevate, you know, that we're all on the same page here. I, mean, I love the fact that we can give this to a quality professional or an executive at an organization and say, here's where we are. You can't argue with the data. And then how do we now attack these issues in terms of priorities if we're really behind in one area or not? So, so Danny, Danny and Steve, I mean, so obviously, you know, your full-time job is not, is not uh, the ASQ or the ASQE. Um, uh, you, you work for your respective companies. What does that mean for, from your perspective? What he just described, how does that translate into, into maybe your companies? So I'll, I'll start off and then hand it to Steve. Okay. Getting that kind of information that's coming out of the insights on excellence is a great tool to then evaluate strategic planning, evaluate organizational initiatives or, or objectives. Are we trying to address the gaps that we've identified in that benchmarking tool? What I also really like about the organizational membership that ASQE has is it goes beyond just the data and the report. There are organizational benefits for e-learning to be able, if you've already identified training gaps or upskill opportunities, now you have an area that's got credible vetted training, whether it's e-learning, live virtual, or face-to-face, -face, that you could take advantage of and not have to do a big search. It's there to match the categories and the gaps you've already identified. 
So, uh, as I understand <coughs> it, you, we were talking there's 180 membership organizations mm -hmm. so far. I assume that's just the, the beginning. Right. Uh, it, is all of what you just described available only to those 180, uh, or is it available <coughs> to industry at large? So those specific mem uh, benefits we talked about, the, the training, the IOE benchmarking tool, those are available as part of that benefit of being an organizational member. Now you can access some of the e-learning and the report through ASQ and through the website, probably for a, a, a nominal fee or something like that. So it is accessible, but in the org membership, it is part of the benefits that, that any org member can get or those opportunities. So there are discounted benefits, like even conference registrations are discounted for the So you send 10 people yes. from your organization. Mm -hmm. And you get discounts on the training, and you get discounts on books and publications and things. And Steve, what is the cost of membership? The cost of membership is, uh, it ranges from, for the organization, 6,000 for the base, up to about 20, 21, 25,000. Uh, depending on your level of what you want, how many people you want to be uh, able to have individual memberships, et cetera. That's annual. Annual. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, it's, you know, it, when we decided, my agency decided to get involved, we looked at the per person cost. You know, it wasn't about that. It was what we were getting back, you know, the and we, we're tapping into the this information. We're tapping into the possibility of talking with uh ASQ divisions and others to help us solve our own problems. So uh, taking the insights, the IOE report, taking that report, that gives us some trend information. It gives us what other agencies are thinking, but it's also helping me identify, I got a problem, I know I have a problem, but how do I put my finger on what it is? And then pairing this information together is invaluable. And uh, very important to get that that type of thing. Uh, companies, agencies, organizations are struggling trying to figure out why. Yeah. And um, uh, the data is helpful, but we can also help them interpret the data. And this is the kind of thing that were the, that got me very interested in being on ASQE. So you asked about in our <laughs> mission statement, <coughs> leadership, which we haven't addressed, mostly talk about the benefits. But out of the insights on excellence are nuggets of, of gaps that we see across industries or in regions of the world, we conducted our first benchmarking survey, and this was not just with org members. We needed to kind of prime the pump with participants back in 2020, right after the pan, right when the pandemic started. And so we were able to work with Forbes, and they, we used their database to recruit across the world uh, participants in the research. Out of that immediately came nuggets of gaps of content and knowledge and training for ASQ. And, and so this is what's fueling the pump for the development of the education content, books, conferences, events, uh, for both individuals and organizations. So that's where the thought leadership piece comes in. What would be an example of a gap? Uh, at, uh, soft skills was one of the big ones. Soft skills. Yep, career paths. Everybody was looking for, you know, the leadership was is an issue. So we've got identified, and everything can't get fixed overnight, but it's being handed over to the technical communities of ASQ and you know, workplace and develop, uh, workforce development, workplace development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, workforce development. Uh, is, you know, we can give that to them and say, here's the kind of things that members are looking for or, in, or companies are looking for. So that's, that's that whole interconnected model where we can give the data to the TCCs, the technical communities, because ASQE isn't in the business of developing training, but Anne's organization is. Right. But, right. but it sounds like ASQE is, in a sense, a precursor uh, to the process of developing what it is that ASQ members. Exactly, and that's exactly why we're pushing so hard to say this is thought leadership now. ASQ can use that data and say this is based on what we've identified just this year in the needs of the world. Instead of in the past, maybe somebody had a good idea for a course or some division had a great idea, but it was hard to put it into perspective. It wasn't it needs based. Yeah, it's, it's just not market, gut it's feel. not data based. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all about the data. So I also, oh, I'm sorry. I also think it's important that um, organizations are still trying to realize how do you deal with individual development and make that work with your organizational needs and organizational development and vice versa. So uh, this interrelationship we have with ASQ and its members is very helpful because we're looking at it from the lens of an organizational wide concern, which is not always the same as an individual. I want to be, get this training because I want this training, not because my organization needs it. And so it's, it's those kind of discussions that are becoming very helpful. 
And uh, is ASQE uh, something that the concept behind it, the trade membership organization, something that ASQ could have done, say, 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Well, they were doing it. It's, yes, this is not new. This is not a new concept. We're just trying to do it better um, and deal with the organizations with a more focus. But yeah, ASQ was already dealing with organizational membership and trying to get this. Um, and it, it just turned out that there was various needs to have this separate organization that had a focus. Yeah, that's what I love is I have the privilege <clears throat> to focus just to support those org members. Well, it seems also that the, uh, and you kind of alluded to it earlier, uh, Steve, is, is that... Um, they're kind of can be at odds against each other. As an ASQ member, I'm looking for certain training because I'm looking for career development because maybe I want to change jobs, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Which may be contrary to what my organization that I work for is looking for. So I think as an industry, what the ASQE is probably, I, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. What the ASQE is doing might be more important industry-wide. Yes. Manuf mm -hmm. you know, what manufacturing is, whatever it is, than what the ASQ is doing because the AS2 is, is focused on more on Education. personal development right. rather than, than yeah. forwarding the needs of Networking. the of industry. Yeah. Network, yeah, exactly. So now you think back and as we talk more and more about it, we talk about that interconnected model. Yeah. It all starts with the IOE data. So yes, in a way, we are leading with that. We're identifying the gaps and the needs. Were there some legal concerns that, that, re that drove the actual two separate entities to be created? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The, the IRS regulations regarding nonprofit organizations within the U.S. There are certain things that a nonprofit organization can do that can benefit members. And then recognizing there are some limitations when you start um, coordinating or addressing organizations. That then becomes the trade part of it because now you're looking at industry versus benefiting an individual. So, so to ensure that we were following the appropriate requirements and regulations really drove that split okay. to okay. keep ASQ so, focused on individuals yeah. and ASQE <clears throat> focused on industry it, and, it, and organizations. That separation of church and state really clarifies the mm -hmm. roles, doesn't it? And also then you don't, you don't have to work as much as threading the needle, right? I mean, this one is clear, this one is clear. <laughs> it also <laughs> defines some of the ethical considerations of yeah. the decision. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. One of the big things we didn't <clears throat> talk about, which is what also drove the separation is our certification business, which we've had for years and years. And that is a 501c6 business. So it was getting to be big enough in the certification business has been growing very healthy. It was getting to be a big enough part of the ASQ revenue that it would become a problem with the IRS if we didn't separate it. Okay. So that's, that's that, a key that's, driver. Yeah, and that, that ties directly to our accreditation. We couldn't apply for accreditation until we were in a 501c6. And if possible, I'd like to go back to the question or the statement you were saying where the individual in ASQ might be looking for training and their needs might be in conflict with the organizational needs. I would, I would even say that the IOE data is now helping the individual see where their training paths or development paths might be. Okay. Thinking from an industry perspective, where am I following the industry and where it's heading versus maybe my own personal passions? Sure. Now I have a clearer path today than not in the past. And you can check against that reality. Right? Absolutely. Is this the business that I want to be in? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And the reality, the benefit of IOE type surveys and data is the reality changes from year to year. You know, businesses change. The uh, pandemic taught us quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that change is still unfolding. A lot of radical changes are happening and getting that information about uh, as an organization, am I alone in this? You can certainly see this through this data. Mm -hmm. Has the pandemic affected, since this all started very close to when the pandemic started, right? Did, did that change the direction at all that the ASQE went? Oh, not at all. No? Really? No. no. Yeah. It, just, it accelerated. Yeah, really? actually. Okay. Yeah. It accelerated the uptake of certifications. Okay. We had record months of certifications during the pandemic. Okay. You would have never expected that when everybody else was struggling. Sure. But what we have that's really beautiful is we work with a partner, Prometric, who delivers certifications virtually. and. Uh, test, you have to do them testing, and they converted their testing model from test centers, which were all in person and had to be shut down. We quickly flipped it to remote proctoring, which is one-on-one -on -one proctoring of you taking our exam. So it's still secure. The better part is it can be handled and done anywhere around the world. You don't have to travel to a test center, which is what it used to be. 
our certification, we're delivering certifications worldwide that we never did before. So per, per, I, personnel certifications, we're, in, we're talking about, okay, yeah, so AS, yeah. so uh, just because I get a little confused, so we're talking ASQ stuff. It's branded ASQ, branded we're, we're ASQ. paying royalties okay, and we yeah. use the brand because it is an ASQ certification. We say it's powered by ASQE. Okay, got it. Okay. So we keep that separate, but okay. to me, the, there's a silver lining in the pandemic that it accelerated the digital transformation right. of, of our business. All right, uh, very interesting. The, all right, let's let's shift gears. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, risk management. <laughs> okay, so and and this builds really on the context that you've just created about ASQE power. All right, we we hear a lot of chatter and have for some years about risk management being part of quality mm -hmm. or should be part of quality or how do you incorporate it into quality? Can you address what how ASQE is? what ASQE thinks of those two words, risk management, and what its role is and, and how it's being rolled out. And do you mean for us or for our members? Well, first with ASQE, as far as the, you know, the, the, uh, the sort of information that is being developed that will eventually be part of training, learning, mm -hmm. certifications, and so on by ASQ, ASQ members. I would start with, that really is sort of at the heart of our insights on excellence. We're really using what is the industry priorities, industry challenges, where industries have gaps. What are those organizations across the globe with global footprints? How are they addressing risk management? Because there's the business risk, right, which then filters through process, which could be in quality or in product or process. So we're looking to fill that gap of information using the Insights on Excellence tool and even the benchmarking tool so that organizations and even members within the organizations can get a better understanding what is risk in my organization, what does that look like in the industry? We're not trying to define what risk is, we're at least trying to help organizations understand where the risk may be in their organization. With numbers and data, because they'll get a score on how they're doing across these eight categories, and they'll be able to see where they compare and stack up against other organizations around the world. And, and that conversation on risk management and applying it to quality has been going on for at least a decade. Yeah, and so, sure. um, um, and we're still thinking and learning. So th this is this is the benefit of these type of societies, uh, ASQ, ASQE. Um, it's not just should it be in or not. It's it's not a binary decision. It's how, where. Um, what parts of it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if you're dealing with human resources, where, what are you dealing with risk management in a different way and how you apply that in your quality thinking? So um, that's a very difficult question to say, should you do it? Well, yes, okay, but to what extent is really dependent on what the industry segment needs and um, how much they're, they're dealing with it and what risk adverse issues they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And does that also include <clears throat> the tools that quality professionals may have at their disposal? Mm -hmm. They're very similar tools. That's that's part of the problem. It's about decision thinking, uh, decision making, thinking, critical thinking. It, all that ties into it. So you can't just put little lines all around these boxes. They really intermesh, and it's important to understand the role of all of these uh, actions. What about uh, what about ISO nine thousand one? Does does the AS uh, or or your your insights has it looked at? the importance, more important, less important of, let's say not just 9001, but ISO QMS standards mm -hmm. in, in general. Is that something that came up on, uh, on your data as, as, as well? We're not getting that specific. I mean, we're looking at high levels. High levels. Yeah, okay. so right. we uh, developed the model and it's in line with the Baldrige framework. So okay. we're, we're laying out a maturity model, for example. Right. So if somebody wanted to start on the journey of excellence and, it, and they have nowhere could be a small company, they don't know where they are, take this IOE survey, start identifying where your gaps are. At the same criteria is used for Baldridge and we've added one, barriers and disruptors. The beautiful part of what we can do with Insights and Excellence is we can adapt the model to see what's going on in the world. So right now we're doing our homework to understand ES and G. Okay. How do we put criteria in that? So we're, we're more nimble than Baldridge in that way. We can change things based on research um, and we can share data back on how you're doing and how the rest of the world is doing. And, and, and speaking of Baldridge, is, is Baldridge still uh, uh, associated with ASQ or is it ASQE? ASQ. Okay, ASQ. all right, okay. But it, the, the, 
It's interesting when we talk ISO 9001 or any standard. Um, standards play a role, but they're not the end all. Um, even Baldridge is they're a criteria. A it's a tool, yeah. and sometimes these tools, literally you put four or five together and you say, I'm gonna use this part and this part over yeah. here and deal with it to meet the needs of what I need to see happen as an organization. And so um, we, we talk about the role of standards, we talk about the need for standards, but we also talk about if the standard doesn't really exist, what do you do and how do you mesh this together? So I, I'm always very cautious when we focus in on any one particular standard. You know, you've got to do this. Um, and it's never that way. It's, it's always a um, uh, recipe that you're, you're trying to develop to, in order to deal with quality in your culture. Yeah, it's 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 one of your it's one of one of your tools, and the tool should serve the organization, not the other way around. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> right, yeah, which okay. is not always the case. Which though. is not always no, the case. Exactly, it's not, yeah. and it, that makes it even more difficult. But that's why you need to focus in on what is it I'm trying to do. Right, and what tool makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, Jim. I'm going to ask you this question in our interview later. Okay. So I'd like to ask it to both Danny and Steve, and I'd like to ask you both. Mm -hmm. Okay. In five words or less, what's the future of the quality profession? Five words or less. Six if you need. <laughs> you just use four. Yeah, exactly. right, right. <laughs> like continuous improvement journeys. It's exactly what I was going to say. Literally exactly what I was going to say. Because it's not, we're not static. We're still moving, even the profession's still moving. And if you're not, you're almost obsolete. And mm -hmm. so um, I, I, I was gonna use those exact words, how dare you? <laughs> well, because what's, uh, what's funny about that is you use the words continuous improvement, but then there's the backstory. You know, how quality as a profession or how quality as a system has evolved so much in, in 20 years, more than 20 years. When I first came into quality right out of college, quality was the cops. Right, Quality was right, something that was going right, to write you a ticket if you did something wrong. Right. Now it's moving into quality is really the consultants. How can we improve the process to let you other functions be the best you can be, keep doing what you need to do in ever-changing environments, regulations, priorities, business existences, mergers, acquisitions, etc. So it's always a continuous improvement because we want to get better because we'll never be perfect. But that's an illustration of the, to use a fancy word, the enlightenment of some companies. Because mm -hmm. right. you know yeah. that not all companies see it that way. They still <laughs> right. see the, the old-fashioned view of the quality. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. But I would say the same thing for even our organizations, ASQE and ASQ. We are also organizations that have to continuously improve. Mm -hmm. and, and we're still defining some of these things. And again, the pandemic was a, a cold shower to many, many organizations. And we came out of it in, in strides. I'm very pr proud of where we came mm -hmm. because we, we said, all right, wait a minute. The old model on some of these things just isn't working. How can we deliver this? And found some tools that are working for us. Are they all fully in place yet? No. Are they going to work forever? Probably not, because we have to continuously improve. Very inspirational. Um, That's our tagline. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Danny Picciotti? Picciotti. Picciotti. Danny Picciotti, Steve Wilson, Jim Templin, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, guys. Awesome. All right, very helpful. good. Yeah.